So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, I got a three-star review. This is from uh, NDAC. N-DAC gave me three stars, or she did, somebody did. Horrible audio quality, excellent content. Uh, first of all, I'm going <laughs> to, uh, let me read the review, then I'll uh, address it. Pat knows the right questions to ask since he was actually in the business. I wish all the interviews were with active producing agents because Pat has a knack for getting to actionable content when interviewing agents. I skip the episodes with coaches and vendors who don't sell real estate and want to sell agents their services. Thanks for the great content, Pat. Please buy a new microphone. All right, so this microphone that I'm on right now is the same microphone I use. Now, I have, I have in the past accidentally forgot to hit the, the computer microphone and used to switch microphones on the computer and, and and those episodes were used and no longer will that happen matter of fact i did one about a month ago and we had to trash it so that will never happen again and then with my guests you know, i don't let them come on anymore if they're using their computer microphone they have to at least have the little tiny things you get with a free phone or you get free with your phone you have to at least have that sort of microphone because uh, Otherwise, I, I won't let you on. I literally just did an episode where I made the dude take like 10 minutes and go and get a microphone set up because it just is too echoey. So we're doing our best. This microphone I'm using now is a, a PR40. It was $450. I think it's even more than that now. So well, that's what I use. Okay, cool. Also, Endec, you know, it's funny that you say that about the coaches and the, and the things that people that have something to sell and i totally get it and i totally appreciate it i am um, you, you would not believe the amount of requests that i get on a weekly basis for people wanting to come on this show and just to give you some perspective I and mean, i'm not exaggerating these numbers at least once a day and um i generally always turn them down unless i think that uh, well they're a good coach and they have they have something of value and even if they're a good coach or even if they're, you know, wanting to sell something, I tell them, I said, this is not going to be a half an hour sales pitch. This is going to be like, you can say who you are and where you're from, but you know, I don't want you, you know, use their space uh, talking about whatever the heck you're trying to make money off of. You know, you have to give back value. You have to pretend like you're going to teach a class in front of the board of realtors and give back as much value as possible. And if they can't do that, I, I, I cut them off. Literally, I just did this yesterday. The guy you know, it was going on and on about, you know, an, an idea of how he can get more leads, but you can only do it with his product. And I was like, I can't use this. It was like, you're going to have to come back again another day and bring me something that people can use for free without having to use your stuff. So I am very conscious of that. I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent, but I do allow some, but trust me, I get many, many requests. It's unbelievable. All right. So I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. And deck. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I got a great uh, guest today, highly recommended by some of our listeners, and I needed to get him on the show. Mr. Stephen Powell is with us, first time on the show. Stephen, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here, and thanks to those that dropped my name, and I'm excited to share my story, and I hope that uh, if, if some of the pain that I've had along the way helps you out and saves you a few years, then it was worth it. There you go. Well, I'm sure it will. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. What, first of all, tell us a little bit about who you are uh, so we can get to know you better. 
You know, thank you so much. Um, and, and I want to uh, uh, caveat first as I go and I frame who I am and where I've come from. I just want, I want to uh, just throw this phrase out there that if a nobody from nowhere can become a somebody from someplace and I was able to do it, then you're able to do it. And um, so my background story based on that, Pat, is, is I came from uh, the way of uh, the school of hard knocks. Um, grew up in a split family, was on my own at 16, dropped out of high school in 10th grade, got my first wife pregnant when, when I was 18, had my first son at 19, went on to have uh, five kids before I entered uh, real estate. And uh, when I entered real estate, I was a single dad with five kids, mm. uh, having come off a massive uh, depressing divorce, needing to reinvent myself and needing to find a better way uh, for my family. And uh, I was pointed uh, to the real estate opportunity. And I got to tell you, I was scared out of my mind, didn't know what to do, uh, was, was scared to death to step out of that comfort of a steady paycheck uh, to a first time uh, situation of being commission only. So that's, that's the, the setting of the backdrop. That's my so what. And I just want to emphasize that everybody's got a so what. Um, and we all start real estate the exact same way. Uh, some come with a little more experience, but, but again, if someone like me can do it, I know you can do it. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, there's a lot of parts of that story I want to dig deeper in today's show. But first of all, let's get to our normal nitty gritty. So like how many houses have you sold, Stephen, in the past 12 months? So in the past 12 months, I sold 27. Uh, that, that roughly represented 11 million in volume here in my area. Um, and and is, you know, there's a, there's, a, yeah, this is in the Palm Springs, greater Palm Springs uh, area, Southern California. Okay. And all by yourself, right? It's just you. All by myself. Okay. And, um, we always like to talk about, uh, profit margin on here because it's, it's relative. We're finding people that are like yourself, um, that are, 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 are making uh, sometimes a lot more profit than uh, others out there with teams of like 10. And uh, so it's important that we, you know, balance out our guests and, and get all sides of the equation. And, and so anyway, so we like to call it ECI, which is ego commission income. When, when we add up those 27 deals over the last 12 months, what, what would you say your gross commission was? Uh, right around 250. Okay. And then what's your profit margin on that? 50%. 50%. Yep. Okay. So you made around a buck 25, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And uh, I'm surprised actually it's 50%. I would, I, I would, I, I was thinking you would say it would be, you know, a higher profit margin, just a, a little bit higher at least. And I'm going to, and I'm going to elaborate on why that is. So, yeah, please. um, every, uh, Every so often, and you know, I'm thankful that in the last 14 years, I've I've fallen into several niches, and uh, the marketplace here in California is a highly competitive marketplace. You've got uh, Redfin at one percent, Purple Bricks. You've got all these different things uh, occurring. So as I saw that shift in the market happening, and I I decided to do a, a brand uh, pivot. Uh, I took 25% right off the top and I've been thinking that into marketing, advertisement and TV and I've been doing that for a while. So um, my strategy coming into the market shift was to basically celebritize myself, make myself a household name out there on the airwaves because I had the budget and you know, I, I'm able to, because I am with a hundred percent commission company, compete on levels that other agents can't compete on and I'm not afraid to reinvest back into my business. So I decided that I was going to take just 25% of that immediately and put it into uh, digital, digital media. So, uh, so this, so this is a, probably, yeah, this is interesting conversation because you, you know, first of all, again, I'm just going to reiterate what he just said. He's at a hundred percent company, right? So what do you just pay a, um, a transaction fee or something like that? I do. So I, I've reached my cap with the company, which is 12 transactions. And after that, I just pay $99 per transaction for the remainder of my year. 
What, what is the uh, cap? I have a five. The cap is uh, uh, fifty four hundred for the year. Five thousand bucks for the year. So, so you're paying about yeah. five. Yeah. So if I, if I divided that by by um, you know twenty seven transactions, right? I mean, you're paying four five hundred bucks each one. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you, it's incredible. Yeah. So, um, so, okay. Interesting. So then, um, now, well, now that we know that, and then you say, okay, I got all this extra fat here. I'm going to start spending that money. I have not heard of any agent that is not on a big team that has, uh, invested in, in television, radio, that sort of thing. Right. Like, like normally, you know, that's a thing for the teams, right? That's a thing for mm -hmm. the team. Mm -hmm. and, and so here you are the little guy, you know, and you're investing in that. I'm curious as hell. What is your message, right? What is your message when you get on the television or the radio? Because it cannot be, I'm assuming, the same message as, as the big team would, would have on, on TV and radio. What is it? Yeah, it's not. So I really had to come up with a value proposition to, to separate myself and my experience level uh, and also compete. So uh, in one part, it's a, uh, a value proposition of a certain savings to the seller uh, for using my services um, and, and also um, displaying my, my past success as an award-winning agent uh, over the years. And, and basically, um, getting that repetition um, uh, over the airwaves of, of constantly having Stephen Powell, Stephen Powell, uh, call Stephen Powell. So it's an economic. Um, so your message is economic. It is. What are, what are you giving them? Like, what are you, you know, what are you giving a seller in an ad? So a seller, yeah. So a seller is getting a 33% rebate. So what I, what I did is I put together, because because I'm at a 100% commission company, uh, I have the latitude to be flexible. So what I wanted to do was create a, a program that was value-driven right out of the gate that I was going to offer more than a typical agent would in, in a regular scenario um, as far as services rendered uh, and do that for less than what that agent uh, would do. So. What I wanted, the objective of that, Pat, was not to be a discount broker, but to be a value broker, uh, to be the Amazon of real estate in my area to say that, you know what, Stephen Powell's been doing this for so long. He's taken, uh, he's reinvested back into his business and his technology. Uh, he's streamlined processes and he's able to save you money and give you full service representation. What's up, a brokers, a team leaders, office managers, and rainmakers of teams? I got a question for you today. What are the two most frustrating things about running a real estate team? The two things that cause you more headaches than anything else. Think about it. The brokers I've talked to have all given me the same answer. Recruiting and retention if you're in the same boat if nothing you've tried seems to work i've got some good news your problem finding recruiting and retaining high quality agents are about to be over i'm launching my new retoot course a course that provides an in-depth first ever look at the recruiting and retention secrets of the industry's top recruiters to kick off retoot's launch I'm offering the course along with two other high value items at a super low price to podcast listeners. Since I'm throwing in two free items with my Retoot Secrets course, I'm going to simply call it my 123 discount package. Okay, so let me talk to you about the 123 discount package. In addition to Retoot, you're going to get a subscription for each of your teammates or anybody in your office to my big profit weekly jackpot emails, which are basically agents from around the world giving advice on how to increase your profit on a daily basis in this business. If your agents put these effective, easy to implement tips to use, their sales and most importantly, their profits will improve. Plus, 
I'll provide you with a year's worth of monthly sales meetings, content to have at your sales meeting. So you don't have to struggle figuring out what to say to your agents or your team. I'm calling it my lunch and learn sales training series. That's an entire year's worth of sales meetings that you won't have to plan and that your agents are guaranteed to get massive value from. So to recap, purchasing the one, two, three discount package gets you one, my brand new retook course Two, my big profit agents, weekly jackpot emails for everybody in your office and three, a year's worth of lunch and learn training sessions. If you want this limited time package, act fast and go to hybendigital.com backslash one, two, three, real easy hybendigital.com backslash one, two, three. Right. Without, without a team, you know, like, like you're, you're getting me 24 seven. Right. Um, so, right. so, okay. So you're basically just saying based on what the, I don't even know what kind of words you could use to say, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, how do you even say that? How do you even say that in an ad? Because you're assuming that, that the commission is, is the same, you know, but it's not right. So, so how do you even say, how do you even say, I give you a 33% rebate. I understand how you say it from a buyer because a buyer co-op is fixed, right? It's like, you know, it's in the MLS, but a seller, what a seller pays is negotiable. So how do you say that in an ad? What kind of words do you use? Uh, you know, I, I use just that save 33% and the explanation is, is what, what is typically asked for, typically uh, expected in most uh, situations, uh, which is six. Do you, um, do, you have, do you have to put a little star down at the bottom based on, you know, do you, I, yeah, I, do. I, I have, I do. I have that disclosed and it's disclosed that commissions are negotiable. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So, uh, all right. So off of that, what, how many, um, how many of the 27 deals are listings? Uh, I, I was about an 80, 20 ratio. Really? That's, that's okay. So that's Mac daddy. And, and, and here's the thing, guys, this is what I like about him. And he, dude's got five kids. So at, at the end of the day, there's no way you're going to do that with buyers, right? There's no way, you, you know, um, you're going to do what he's doing with, it's very difficult, right? So, so let me ask you about five children and, and that's in single dad scenario, right? Like, first of all, most yep. single dads with five kids or even single mom with five kids would not think in their mind, it's humanly possible to be a real estate agent um, with, with how hard you have to work, um, especially without a team um, that you can leverage too. Right. So how did, how, like, what were you thinking? Well, you know, thankfully you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. And I tell you the many times along the way, Pat, I wanted to quit. Uh, the pressure was intense. It was scary. Uh, there were many months that I came to the edge of the money and, and, uh, um, you know, appeared to be looking down an abyss. Uh, I tell you, there were two, if I could say that, uh, magic happens, sometimes and and provident smiles uh on the traveler uh, i will tell you that there were two significant events that occurred to me in and around the 2006 uh era of my first year in uh, real estate and that was one as i was introduced to the principle of correspondence of the law of correspondence um which basically states you got to give to receive and uh, a really good friend and mentor of mine challenged me to get out of my poverty mentality and to give a portion of my money and my income to those less fortunate than me. And that created an energy shift within me, got me to look at money different, got me to look at things different, not from a position of lack, but from a position that there's more than enough for anyone. Uh, secondly, um, as Providence would happen. I was driving down the street one day 
contemplating how on earth do I do this? I was doing everything that everybody said. I was writing letters. I was uh, doing open houses and just nothing seemed to work for me. It took me one year to sell my first house, uh, which is, you know, I've got these mouths to feed. This is frustrating. But I was driving down the street path and I saw a car dealership marquee. And this is a down market. Everybody's leaving real estate. Everybody's telling me you're crazy. Go get your job back. Um, and I see this marquee and it says Arturo, salesman of the month. And it really rocked me hard because I, I reasoned within myself that regardless of what a market's doing, people are still buying and selling. And if someone is buying and selling and there's a salesman, then somebody's got to be number one. So why not me? And that question uh, just hit me so hard. And I said, yeah, why not me? And I tell you, from that point on, uh, I began just telling everybody, look, I'm going to be number one. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the guy that goes across the stage, uh, gets my trophy, and they're going to ask me, how'd you do it? I'm going to say, I have no idea. Um, you know, Pat, <laughs> in 2008, yeah, in 2008, I sold 108 homes for a little over $15 million, uh, in total volume. That was uh, uh, REO-driven. Uh, I was number one in the office, and I won a trip to Hawaii. And I can tell you it was those two events, number one, reciprocity and giving, and number two, uh, getting that vision and belief that it was possible for me, this nobody from nowhere, to, so, to be so you, that guy. And, and, and you, you sold 108 homes by yourself, and, and now you're selling 27. So, and, that, and that's all a, 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 a result of, of REOs, right? Because they were just like flying at you then, right? Like 10, 10 a that month, was, 20 and, a month. Yeah, and that's right. And, um, you know, the difference, the contrast of then and now, um, you know, back then I was 36 years old. Now I'm 47. I, I really don't care to work as hard. I know what it takes to sell 108 houses and I'm really comfortable with the 30 uh, a year lifestyle. <laughs> it's good for me. It's good for my marriage. Uh, you know, back, you know, I, I had remarried. I guess I got to add one more kid to this. I have six kids total. Um, oh, dirt. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, only, you, I, only have, I only have one left at home. So, you know, we're okay. I get to go. It's a lot easier now. <laughs> yeah. I get to go and have steak and lobster and not worry about it so now. 12 before years I had ago. When, yeah, like like not even like when you did in two thousand eight, you did one hundred and eight sales. Like, what kind of time management skills did you use um, to number one do one hundred and eight sales, and number two have I assume most of those kids were at home still. Yeah, so thankfully, because of my uh, my background in in corporate America, um, my time management tasks was they were they were really good. I'd say my biggest challenge that I had, and I ended up hiring a coach, not for the business side of real estate, but I didn't know how to shut it off. Um, I was working seven days a week, 30, 40 days at a time. I was so far out of balance uh, doing the work and, and being first in, last out. That was easy. Stopping to take time off. I mean, that was almost like I had guilt and anxiety to take an afternoon for myself. So I had to really get involved in life coaching back in 08 to bring myself back to a place to, uh, of, of some type of balance because um, I, I let it go too far to where the business affected me personally, and it was taking its toll on my health. It was taking its toll on my marriage. And so if I, if I wouldn't have uh, adjusted my perspective and got someone to help me with my blind spots, it would have been pretty difficult. Hmm. And um, so, uh, you, you know, it, did you quit REOs or did REOs just dissipate? Uh, REOs uh, dissipated as far as it being worthwhile volume. I've still done them over the years, uh, but the, the, I don't know that we will ever see that kind of volume again until... Yeah, we will, uh, but I know a lot of people quit them because there's just no profit in them. I mean, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Out, out here, uh, you know, it, every REO, you're out about $2,500 for 90 days. That's the reality oh, of an right. REO. Without getting paid, right? So, yeah. without getting paid because you're putting out expense. Um, but I still, you know, would have, uh, you know, a few 
Um, and, and sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes, you know, you get uh, REOs that, that you wonder, God, why am I doing this? And, you know, in the case of last year, gosh, I got a great REO and a country club ended up double ending it. And it was a $700,000 uh, REO. I made 40 grand just from that one transaction. Yeah, right. And then, and then those are the ones that keep you hooked on the heroin as you're like, you know, like, if I get one of those a year, I'm happy, right? Because I didn't have to work for it right. to get it at least. Right. So, so yeah, interesting. Okay, cool. So, um, and um, uh, tell me like, like of the deals you're doing now, how many of them are coming from your, um, tel is it all television? Is that all you're doing now, television? Yeah, right now, a hundred percent everything that I have in my pipe is from the TV. Uh, the the response to the ads were great, and, and it took about eight months to build that up. Um, you know, and I was prepared. And I tell people, look, if you're going to do TV, you need to have fifty grand set aside and be prepared for six months for not a whole lot to happen, mm -hmm. because it it takes time, repetition. Uh, so to do describe, that. describe the ad to me. Is it is it just you sitting there talking? Uh, what is it? So we've uh, we've done a few different um, evolutions of that ad, and I actually um, will be meeting with a producer today. I have a thirty minute infomercial that you'd see that a team would run that I'm doing, and uh, it's almost done. It's in its uh, second edit, and uh, that's probably going to hit the airwaves next month. Um, but the commercials, when they started off, because we, you know, we didn't know what was going to work. It was, uh, just a simple question. Why choose Stephen Powell as your real estate agent? Um, and we did it. We, we chose to have a voiceover actor for the first, uh, it was a 30 second spot. And so for the first 22 seconds, it was a voiceover actor, uh, basically saying, uh, you know, Stephen Powell has a, a proven system, uh, lots of experience. And then the last eight seconds was me saying, hey, I'm Stephen Powell, uh, call me today. Um, and, you know, we tried to come across very sincere and professional in that. Uh, so we, over the, over time, we did a couple uh, different variations of that commercial. Um, one of the most successful ones that we ran was specifically um, where I gave them a dollar figure because a lot of people can't do math in their mind. Uh, when they're special on TV. So if I tell you that hey, I'm going to save you 30%, 33%, what does that mean? Well, if, if it's a $500,000 house, it's roughly about 10 grand that you're going to save. So we came on the screen saying that, uh, you know, giving them math. Uh, and then we did one that was, uh, I think did really well also was a, uh, 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 and I actually got the idea from Homebay. Uh, I was watching Facebook uh, and Homebay had an ad that came through and they did a great job on their graphic but where they were scrolling houses and how much money was saved. So we did a, a whole segment of there was like 15 houses that scrolled with the a banner with how much money the seller saved. Yeah. Uh, and then we did it. Yeah. Do you, do you still do that? That that particular one is running. We just did a new one that's going to coincide with the um, the infomercial. Um but we're going to have another one that's going that we're going to do that we're actually just we're going to cannibalize the infomercial so that we don't have to pay for production again. Um, one of my past one of the clients uh, did an incredible video testimonial, so we're going to just hammer the airwaves with that. So um, you know, this is funny because you know, here's the thing: I'm I'm licensed now, but my license is getting ready to expire. I'm going to just let it expire, right? Because I haven't sold a house and over a decade, but, but, um, but, um, personally, right. Still, I'm still attached to a team and that sort of thing, but I want, I want to get into minutia there. Um, I, I have this idea. I'll share it on this screen. If you want to do what Steven's doing or Steven, you want to do this. I've, I've, I used to do commercials all the time. I have probably done 10 of them and did really, really well with them uh, back in the day. And, um, so the idea is similar to your idea of, you know, people don't understand, you know, hey, I'm going to give you 33% back. They don't know what the hell that means, right? They don't, they don't get it. Even, you, you know what I mean? Even if, you, um, even if you tell them I'm going to do it for X percent instead of Y percent, they still, don't get, they still really don't understand what that means. Um, so I always thought it would be a great commercial to show them what it meant. So let's say you take the average sale price in your market, 
and you take whatever percentage you're going to do or whatever dollar figure, you take your dollar figure idea, whatever it is, let's say it's 10 grand and you find something that's worth 10 grand and you destroy it on camera. So you, you, you literally, you're like, Hey, I'm Stephen Powell. And I just bought this used, you know, Toyota RAV4 and I'm going to run it off the cliff. And you let it run off the cliff. And then you're going, that's what, we'll ha that's what you'll do if you don't call me. And you explain it, right? Or you go, you go to a Best Buy and you just go in there and you start taking out these flat screen TVs one at a time and you just start throwing them in the dumpster. I just threw out seven flat screen TVs. That's what essentially you're doing if you don't use Stephen Powell or something like that. And I don't know what you can get away with. That's fantastic. I, I question if you could even get away <laughs> with what you're doing now, but the, the, just because you're assuming that the commission is a, a certain amount, which it may, which you can't really prove, but, but, um, but nonetheless, if, if you haven't gotten in trouble for it yet, so, you know, it's working, but so, um, but yeah, th that's what I would do. I would, I would, um, you know, that was my idea and I never used it. I think if I was in business today, unequivocally, that's how I would disrupt the market because that's what people understand. You know, they understand what, what happened. He just threw away a flat screen TV, right? They get that, right? <laughs> they don't get it when you talk percentages and, and even dollars. It's like, you know, you say, you know, I'll do it for a flat. I had a thing one time, um, a campaign I was trying to run that where I did it for a flat fee, right? Like, like you take the average commission just like you're doing and be like, you know, the X percent is, is this much. We're going to do it for a flat this. People still struggled with that. Like they don't, they, you know what I mean? It's very hard for them to get yeah. the conceptualization of, you know, th this is real money. It's kind of like equity in people's houses is like buying something on your first credit card. They, you know, it feels like it's not real money or poker chips in a casino. It feels like it's not real money for some reason equity but if, if you can put it in a, a mental state of mind where it becomes real money right like you're you're at a casino and you're like uh, here's all these freaking chips made out of plastic or wood or whatever they're made out of you can keep those or i'll give you this car You'd be like oh screw that i'm gonna take this car you know you know, <laughs> you know what i mean like it just yeah no i think that's it. brilliant i'm definitely gonna use that <laughs> and then and then every six months you change it right you're like oh what's Stephen powell gonna change now what's he gonna destroy now <laughs> you know that's worth ten thousand dollars anyways um really cool um okay <laughs> so uh <laughs> um all right so tell me about like um some technology like uh, do you have any cool technology that you're using that uh, people need to know about well you know what um and this goes back in how do you increase your margin is uh, the more that you outsource and you can't do things on your own or keep it in your team, uh, that cuts into uh, profit. So, you know what? I went out and bought the best technology and acclimated myself with it. I have a Matterport camera. I have uh, a 4K drone. Uh, I know how to do uh, all that. I don't have to outsource a single thing. Um which also drives my, my profit margin and, and is one of the reasons that I can do. Um, and I'll be honest with you, with that technology, it doesn't take that much more time uh, than it does to outsource it and wait for somebody to give it to you. Actually, I almost have faster results uh, investing in your technology. And I can tell you that, that you know, yes, Matterport is a, it's a $3,500 camera. Uh, a drone is a grant, but I don't look at that as an expense. To me, those things are already paid off. Um, and you know what? In between things, I'll side hustle with that, Pat. I'll make 250 bucks for someone else. Uh, you know, and they call me up and say, hey, you know what? I, I need to film a listing for me. Sure, I've got the afternoon. I'll go over. It takes me an hour. I'll make 250 bucks in an hour. God bless America. That's, <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's how amazing. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, you can do so much in real estate. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest 
brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded can be printed can be used immediately and we got things like scripts and dialogues checklists for teams checklists to keep agents accountable referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers everything you can think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now hey real estate agents and rock stars if you're getting value out of the content in this episode make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel also click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes yeah. and i would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes i welcome any feedback below now back to the episode I, I would have to imagine, and I like that. That's good shit. Um, so I would have to imagine that to do 20% buyer deals, right, you almost have to not, you know, your, your standards have to be really, really high. Like, you know, like, and, and I guess in today's world, you can do this because, you know, once you put the, the, your listing in MLS, you know, it's going to show up online in Zillow and Redfin and everything else as, Someone else is listing, not yours. And uh, other agents are going to show it and you're not going to make that buyer deal. Um, so I understand uh, how this could happen because certainly back in the day before Zillow and the MLS was public, you know, um, it, you almost had to have a higher percentage than 20% buyers just because you got those opportunities. You had to take them. Um, someone said, hey, I want to look at this house. Um, but like, I'm just curious, what are your standards when a buyer does call you direct? You know what I mean? Um, when, how do you decide, yeah. hey, I'm going to work with this guy and not this person? Well, my preference, if I'm going to work for a buyer, they want the house that they're calling on. And um, the majority of the buyers that I do work with, I'm going to uh, probably 20% of them or maybe a little more. I'm double ending the transaction. Um, my standards for a buyer, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, I lose a lot of buyers, and, and that's okay, uh, because I, it, unless they're ready and they can make a decision and, and you know, they can narrow down uh, 10 to 15 houses relatively quick, I will, I will lose business personally and my business model uh, chasing them around for one deal when I can get two to three listings in the pipe. Uh, and why is that? Well, because I understand statistics. Every listing is worth 1.6 deals. Uh, and uh, to give you, uh, give the listener an understanding of why you should be a listing agent, I went on vacation. I was in Maui at the end of April. Uh, and I had, I put two in escrow while I was swimming at the beach. Uh, and was I chasing the buyer? No. Other buyers brought their buyers to my listings. And so uh, that is, you know, one of the glorious things about being a listing agent is you have, uh, you know, essentially an army of buyer's agents that are, that are out there uh, showing homes, uh, you know, and if, and if you price reasonably well, and my average days on market is 72 days on market, which is, you know, uh, not too bad, not shabby in this, uh, uh, marketplace. Um, it just makes more sense uh, for me to let them go if they're not, you know, really on point and ready to make that decision. And um, so 
So I either try to refer them out or, you know, sometimes they just get poached. I honestly, I will, I'll admit, I've got to do a better job on, on not letting them bleed out. And I don't, I don't mean to sound so like, ah, oh, so what, who cares? I mean, obviously, yes, I'd like to make the money no, but on it. I, yeah, but you, but you don't know. I, I think maybe you're, you're right, but you're wrong. Like I, there's nothing. Here's the thing, right? Like you, you feel guilty, right? I could tell that in your voice. You feel guilty. You let me <laughs> But at the end of the day, it, it, it may be working for you. It may be actually smart to do because you don't know. Like once you let that monster in the room, you know, you could go back to those workaholic days that you had back, you know, 10 years ago and, and then be, you know, you know, working all the time. And then listings, like you said, within Maui, you were able to sell two listings and you, and you had a thousand agents working for you through the MLS you know, and everything else. If somebody wants to see a house nowadays, they're going to see it w w without you, right? They're going to they're going right. to be able to see it without you. They're going to get pissed that they can't get you because there's eight million ways to see it. So it may right. be a good thing. And you think about other countries, the the way the these other a lot of other countries, and um, some agents. I talked to one agent recently that's like this. You know, it they do believe deep down is it, it is a conflict of interest to work both sides. So they absolutely won't do it. Right. And if you think about it deep down, if you took commission out of the equation and you just simply ask the question, is it a conflict of interest to work both sides? Yeah, of course it is. Right. Because, you know, a lawyer wouldn't work both sides of a, of a case. So, um, so yeah, you know, so maybe, uh, Anyways, I can think my point is maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you shouldn't feel guilty. Maybe that's just your way. I did talk to another agent recently from the uh, United States that didn't work both sides, just refused to work both sides, just said, you know, I don't, you know, you, you got to go find an agent. They would say, if you want to see the house, you got to go find an agent. And I thought after that conversation that, um, that you know, their time is so much better controlled. So uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and in some states, uh, Pat, uh, dual agency is against the law. California, it's not. And I tell you, um, you know, I do, I do uh, carry a legal insurance through real estate risk management, which is an Orange County law firm. And for a nominal fee for each transaction, uh, I get some uh, coverage for my client and myself. Um, and, you know, I did have a sticky situation once where a seller didn't disclose that there was mold and they knew there was mold and they never told me, they never, they never shared the report with me. And, uh, but I did note discoloration in my uh, agent visual disclosure. Uh, I did, did note that uh, there appeared to be water damage in my disclosure. I did recommend inspections, but that buyer, uh, you know, of course assumed that I was lying and that I was uh, in cahoots with the, the seller to bamboozle them. Now, Fortunately for me, I had the legal insurance. I immediately, when I was contacted by the uh, other party's attorney, contacted uh, uh, real estate risk management, explained to them what was happening. I sent them all my records. And they stepped in and basically said, if you, Mr. Seller, can prove that you sent Stephen Powell the mold report and, and can show communication that you disclosed that to him, then we'll participate in mediation. If not, then we're not going to participate. So having that certainly assisted me, and I, I would feel less comfortable if I didn't have that kind of service at my disposal. Um, but, uh, you know, that that could have been a real sticky situation, and fortunately for me it wasn't because well, I, I, a, I hadn't done anything wrong. That's a great story. So let me, let me ask you this question. So let's say now, knowing what you know and going through that, Let's say tomorrow you go on a listing appointment and they got mold. What are you going to do? Well, I tell you, first off, I'm, I, I, they would have to say that I've got mold. And let's obviously say, I would disclose well, that. Well, let's say it's blatant. Or let's well, say they had the a thing. leak it's, in the basement. Not, yeah. So, so that's a tricky question, see, because I'm not a, I'm not a mold expert. I cannot, I cannot say you have mold unless a mold expert came in there. I can say, I see dark spots, but I don't know what they are. Yeah, right. You don't know what because, kind of mold it is. Yeah, see, see, yeah. Maryland, I just have to disclose. In Maryland, in Maryland, they got something called latent defect, which means 
latent defect, and I don't know, if California must be different, but latent defect means like if you, if you know that the basement flooded, then that's a latent defect, which means is a possibility that there's mold. And you have to disclose latent defects. Yeah. I, in, in the area that I'm at, we're a desert. We don't have sub-basements uh, here in, uh, in this area. There may be basements in other parts of uh, uh, Northern California. Um, I, I wouldn't know if, if there's the same thing, only because we don't, we don't deal with basements here. I think the I think the answer is you know when in doubt disclose at least this is my answer right like I had a friend Absolutely. in the business back in the day and and he had uh, he sold a house the, the husband hung himself in the uh, garage and um, the wife said I don't want you to tell anybody that right because I want top dollar right so he chose not to say anything right that was his decision not to disclose that. Somebody bought the house, they sued the shit out of him. Now, what happened was, at the end of the day, they lost, right? Because he was working for the seller, right? And the seller said, hey, no, you know, I don't want you to disclose that. What the court found, and this, this was years ago, what the court found was that um, it, was not a legal, it was not a legal question, right, about whether or not he should disclose that or not. It was an ethical one. He could have said, I don't want to have to face that agent when I see him in Starbucks that that's the co-op agent. You know, I don't want to have to face that buyer. If I was a buyer, I wouldn't want somebody doing that to me. All those questions were moral questions, not legal questions. And, and morally he made the decision. He was going to go ahead and represent this seller and, and he was going to let the chips, you know, let, let it be undisclosed. Um, and I always remember that decision because it was a moral question versus a legal question. Like morally, it could have been like, I don't want to screw, you know, somebody, I don't want the karma. So I, I think as agents, you know, you got to ask that too, whether it's legal, or whether it's moral, you know, what's the moral question if, you, you know, uh, would you want to buy a house where the agent hid a latent defect or hid black spots and knew that the seller painted the whole basement white. You know what I mean? Um, or a whole wall white because there were black spots on it. It's a great, it's a great conversation. Yeah, definitely. Well, I always find Pat that, um, you know, I want to always be in a position where I don't have to remember very much later. <laughs> you know, it's a lot harder to piece it together later uh, than to just, you know, do everything that you need to do. And then, forget about it no i think you're smart i think you're smart and that's all disclosure and transparency and the more you you have written down and the more people sign and the more the more you can get your sellers to acknowledge in writing the, the safer you're going to be legally so um but anyways this, this has been good dude um we've been we, we've gone all across the board uh with with conversation here i love what you're doing I love talking uh, commercials with you, and uh, and 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 you've you've had a great career already in the in the decade or so that you've been in business, especially starting out with five kids. Um, inspiration for everybody. I appreciate you coming on the show, Stephen. Now let's talk about your free gift. As everybody, as everyone knows, or or we'll find out with me saying it right now. Uh, if you go to the show notes of Stephen's show, which I'm going to give you. Um, uh, we will put a free gift that he is offering. So first of all, Stephen, what is the free gift that you're bringing? So one of my uh, things that I've always been really good at uh, through my careers is, is creating systems and processes and uh, having an effective planner, you know, anybody that's followed Stephen Covey and, you know, went through his systems or, you know, if you're looking for a good planner, um, I created this planner out of necessity for myself and having helped several other people needing to get organized. And so it's really kind of a balanced approach to planning. And uh, I call it the Gold Tracker Planner. What I do is I'll print 30 of those out every single month and I keep them on a clipboard. The night before, uh, when I'm when I'm decided that my day is over, uh, I will go to my calendar. I'll write down all of my appointments uh, that I've gathered electronically, and then I will sit and empty my mind of everything that I think that I need to do. I'll 
ta you know, have tasks. That list of to-dos becomes a living to-do list because anything that that next day that I wasn't able to get automatically will go to that next day's list. Uh, there's a tracking portion down there for those that like to know how many phone calls you're making, how many reaches you're doing, uh, how many follow-ups, how many appointments. Uh, you'll find that in the box below that, uh, the to-do list. And then down below, uh, there's these little circles. And I think it's real important that you always keep in mind your own personal talents and the things that you like that have nothing to do with business that are important to you. And so I find that some of those things don't necessarily need to be scheduled in a time slot. It's, you know what, I'm looking at my day and my calendar and wow, I've got 30 minutes to play guitar. I'm going to grab my guitar and I'm going to play 30 minutes and, you know, I'm going to fill that in and I know that I'm, I'm still being me in that. So that, that planner kind of encompasses a lot of different areas, but it really keeps you on point. Um, it's, a, it's a great tool and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that, guys. So appreciate that, Stephen. So, uh, guys, I'm going to put that on hybendigital.com backslash Stephen Powell, and it's S T E P H P H, like Pat Hyben, S T E P H E N <laughs> Powell, P O W E L L. Hybendigital.com backslash Stephen Powell, Stephen Powell. And also, if you want that plus all the other gifts that everybody's donated to the show, just go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. Steven, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a blast. I appreciate you and uh, best of luck to you. If I'm ever out in your neck of the woods, I will definitely look you up and uh, we'll get together and break some bread. That sounds good to me, Pat. Thanks so much. It was truly an honor and uh, God bless everybody. And I just wish everyone that uh, hears this prosperity and success in the future. The best is yet to come. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.